Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of ET Insights. I'm your host, Jeffrey Platt. Welcome to the show. And today we have a special guest, Fernando Rivas. Fernando, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, uh, Jeffrey, for, for inviting me. And yeah, I'm more than happy to be here. We're very glad and happy to have you here. So, Fernando, could you give us a, a little bit of an idea of uh, who you work for, what you guys do, and what you specialize in? Sure. Well, uh, for those that uh, does not know me or that not know Bolinga, I am basically the founder of Bolinga AI. Uh, we are a company that is specialized on NERF technology. Uh, for those who doesn't know NERF, is Neural Radiance Field. It's a, a new way, a new technique for 3D reconstruction using uh, AI. Um, we are basically creating solutions for media and entertainment. Uh, that allows professionals to to rec recreate, reconstruct, and have 3D environment on 3D assets in a matter of hours. Um, main use cases are virtual production and VFX. Uh, and yeah, we have been, or well, the company has been out since uh, the beginning of this year. Um, we are doing some some cool cool stuff that we'll talk about it later. Cool. Very, very cool. So a little bit about like in terms of uh, what you guys do, how did you get how did you get started in visual effects and how did you end up coming to uh, realizing Nerf technology in general? Cool. This is a, a really good question. I may tell you the, the longer version so you can understand it better. Basically, Spolingas has been out from a research center, a private research center research center, which is called Archimea Research Center from Archimea Group, a Spanish technological company. Uh, what we do here, or what we did in the center, we were allowed to research in everything we want as long as we can transfer that to the market. Uh, so I joined three years ago in 2020, just before the publication of the first NEF paper. So just before NEF were born. And I was just searching for cool stuff to research in. Uh, suddenly came out, came across to to NERF paper, um, and that time it we were very lucky because there uh, there was some people from the BFX the, uh, industry, some BFX artists at the also at the center, um, because we feel that AI and uh, BFA, BFX has like a really good synergy. Um, mm -hmm. We were showing NERF to 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 them, and they were like, "Wow, this is game changing!" Like if you tell me that from uh 20 30 pictures we can get this this amount of photorealism uh, this is going to disrupt the whole industry and that's how we started in 2020 back then there were there were a lot of challenges that had to be solved uh in order to make nerf a useful for technology but we were um really focused on, on this on this industry the vfx um we started researching in three main topics, which are uh, relightning, uh, real-time rendering, because on that, uh, back on those days, do it took like eight hours to render a 10-second video using that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> not anymore. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and also integration with the current workflows, with current 3D engines, because NAF are narrow representations. There are no messes. There are no polygons. Uh, so this is like quite difficult to integrate with the uh, standard workflows. Uh, back in 2022, after two years of research, we got uh, some results that we thought it were they were interested, interesting. Basically, we did this the first and uh, NEF integration in Unreal Engine uh, ever, and we did a small uh, Twitter and LinkedIn post, and it got a lot of attention, more than much more than we what we expected, and then. I'm sure it did. Uh, yeah, and then in, back in that moment, it was like one year ago. That's where I said, "Okay, I, I think we think we have something here. <laughs> Let's see if we can transfer that to the market." And uh, in that moment, we made the decision of creating a, a spin-out of creating Bolinga. Um, actually, working not only on researching but making this uh, a product and delivery to the to the to the users. And uh, yeah, that's basically how we we reach here. So, what are the kind of the main your main focus markets are, are visual effects, obviously, and virtual production. Um, what are some of the other markets and things that you see this being very beneficial for? And um, what are yeah, some of the 
some of the overall technologies that you guys are using? Yeah, I think NAV has will have a lot of impacts in a lot of markets. Uh, basically, everywhere where you need 3D visualization or you need, or you can use 3D visualization, not only where you need. If you can have a, an easy 3D tool or an easy way to create 3D representations, uh, it will make 3D more accessible to people. So basically we are thinking uh, like the obvious markets like games, uh, AR, VR, all these uh, metaverse, uh, spatial computing from Apple of this, mm -hmm. but not only like also you can think of real estate to create appealing videos of, of uh, apartments. Um, you can think of um, retail and also having logistics having a 3D volumetric representation of your storage, of your warehouse, of your elements. So I think the room right now for NEF uh, is really large. There is a, a lot of markets where it can impact. The reason why I now focus on, on BFX and media entertainment industry in general is be, uh, there are three reasons. The first one is we believe NEF technology is ready for that industry because, for example, if you think about video games, there's still a lot of uh, things you have to to work on like uh, fixes interactions, being able to run uh, NAVs not in a high-end computer, but also in a mobile phone, uh, all of this. So it's not ready yet for this kind of industry, but for BFX, uh, where professionals has a lot of uh, compute power and powerful uh, machines, and they have time and they are, they, they are willing to, let's say, uh, work on their scenes in order to make them good. Uh, right now, we believe NAV is ready for uh, for them. Also, uh, right now, it, NAV is not a really, um, like, do have to try to disrupt the industry as, it, it disrupt the industry, but not the workflows, right? Um, there are a lot of workflows in a lot of industries where NAV uh, will be quite disruptive yet, and there's a lot of work uh, there to be done, but, in the BFX industry, there's a, an awareness because uh, they are also quite innovative and quite visionaries in general, the people from this industry, and they have been uh, seen NEF from one year, more or less ago. So they have been preparing for it. Uh, we are seeing that the entry barrier in the market, the adoption of the professionals is really uh, faster than in other industries. Um, and yeah, this was uh, the second one. And third one, sorry about that, that's just forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> totally <Okay>. fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so well, was basically, I, the, 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 first... the technologies I've been seeing, you yeah. know, uh, your website kind of illustrates some of the things that you guys have been working yeah. on, some of the workflows that you've been um, integrating into. I can see things like Pixitope and Disguise listed yeah. as a, a couple of, uh, it looks like, partners possibly for the product. So yeah, I was actually, asking about some of the technologies and the things that you've been integrating into. Yeah, we believe, yeah, as I said, you have to disrupt the industry, but not the workflows. And, and yeah. we are actually partnered with these guys. Uh, and that's why we have a native integration with them also. Uh, our technologies also, inter it, it, like you can integrate it in Pixel Top because they are like mm, really similar to Unreal. Uh, yep. And we are planning to bring all the NEF uh, power to all these tools. Not only, so we are not going to stop here. Um, but I think it's, it's really cool because when you have these synergies, because for, for example, with these guys, it's a really cool example. You have a way of doing virtual production in a really easy way, setting up all your studio really fast, not having to fight with all the Unreal configurations, all the machine, uh, local network configuration. And now you have a way of generating 3D environments really easy, really fast, just with a one minute video, and uh, without the need to know or to be a skilled 3D artist. And I think this, for example, this synergy is like really cool. Uh, suddenly um, it became really easy to, to use uh, three environments and to use virtual production for anyone, not only for 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 skilled professionals. This lowered entry barrier a lot. And also regarding this, I don't know if you know Boot Technologies, uh, but they are making. They have just announced uh, Boot One, which is a like a how do you call it? Like a really easy uh, product to start with for virtual production. So they give you everything all only one. 
uh, um, LED screen, camera tracking, processing, and you can even uh, control the system from your phone and use environments. And we are also partnering with them uh, to have. What's, you mentioned was that Boo technology? What was the Boo, Boo technologies? technologies? Yeah, the product is called Boo One. Uh, it's V U. Um, and it's really cool because now oh view view technologies view technologies yeah sorry yeah, <laughs> yeah I, think, I think also they are, they are in, in Miami I think or in Orlando also yeah they're uh, they're actually based out of Tampa yeah in Tampa I think that's, yes. that's where they started in Tampa they have studios in Orlando and uh, I think in Las Vegas as well there's a few locations yeah. view has studios yeah and it's really cool because now this this is a a pro who is targeting basically small teams that want to do virtual production but cannot go into the effort of setting up a whole stage and not only setting up but managing all the whole stage because there are maybe three or four people and it's really cool when you think that all these technologies are com converging and are allowing people to use this incredible technology which is virtual production uh, with no wi uh, and yeah i think this this kind of synergies this kind of partnering is really cool and um, uh, we in bolinga we uh, believe in it and that's why we are doing it and we plan to continue doing it. that's great so can you tell me a little bit about like uh i think we've we've kind of touched on some of the big advantages of nurse but can you maybe explain to our audience a little bit more about the technical side of nurse and kind of how they work cool so uh let's assume we have okay we're going a little bit technical here but let, let's assume uh, you can represent or you, you yeah all the wall is like a function a mathematical function everything in the wall you can be can be represented with a mathematical function for example if you have a, a circle in your screen you have a mathematical mathematical function that represents a circle if you have a sphere you have a mathematical function that represents the sphere but in 3d dimensions so with this uh, same same idea in mind, for example, if you want to represent, I don't know, the uh, Disney logo, the Mickey Mouse, uh, you can use <laughs> for three, here in Florida, of course. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you can use three spheres, right? And now you can combine three different functions uh, into one function to create this more complex shape. So, building on this idea, you, uh, you can theoretically represent every three, all every scene, every part of the wall as a as a as a function, but it will be a really complex function, right? Uh, so, for example, the, the room I'm in uh, here, or the room you are uh, located, Geoffrey, which is, I think, it's more complex than mine. It will have a really complex three function, right? Okay. But a lot of depth and different exactly. squares it, it, and it will, and exactly, it will be like a function that that represents. You, you can think it a, a function that represents each point in the in the three space with a density and a color right and this way you can represent this function if a point is not empty and has for example in the self the brown color okay you just know what what is in that point and in this way you can represent all the 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 scene the problem is that this function are really complex no one can work it out like and you will need uh, like a team of mathematicians to work the function <laughs> for each scene but there is a cool thing that has been Using, we have been using it from, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years now, that are neural networks. Neural networks are nothing more than uh, function approximators. They are really good at uh, trying to approximate functions, just having some measurements or some data from, from the functions, not all the function itself, and they approximate it, right? So that's the basic idea. They approximate, approximate and then they compare, and they approximate exactly. and then they compare. Exactly. And then they it's like decide it's, which one is right, which one is better that's right just going and keep going and keep going exactly uh then you combine these three ideas like i can represent each three of these seen as a function and then i can approximate any function with a neural network okay let's put both things together and then boom now you have your 3d scene represented in a neural network uh, there are some other things going on there down there that because people may think, okay, and why this is happening now <laughs> and not 10 years ago? Well, there are some things, some challenges that have to be solved, like differentiable rendering. And, uh, well, you have to come with the idea of low frequency, uh, like high, representing high frequency details with this, uh, all the three coordinates, all of this. There are some challenges that have, have to be solved. But the main idea is just combining these two, these two concepts 
And now you have the representation of that three scene in a neural network, which is a completely different way, completely new way of representing three scenes. Not using polygons, not using using meshes like before or point clouds, but now you have a neural network, and on each point of the space you ask the neural network, "What do I have here?" And with that you render your image. Yeah, it's some really, really cool stuff. I've been pretty fascinated with the way that things have been working out and kind of the different, we've been speaking about some of the different uh, use cases for our AI uh, inside of different technologies. There's been lots of talk about it, you know, being used uh, with speech and text recognition, things like chat mm -hmm. GPT. We've spoken about quite heavily, but it's really interesting to kind of uh, bring on a specialist like yourself talking about things more spatial uh spatially represented and um or spatially <clears throat> yeah spatially represented and um you know to to kind of see how that applies and how ai applies kind of in in the more visual uh workspaces um i think some of the really interesting stuff too is like i've done a, a fair amount of projection mapping and Mm -hmm. uh, things along those lines. And I'm really interested to see once we can get nurse up to a point where they can truly work in a fully a real time environment, uh, you know, how those are going to change some of the workflows just creatively in the 3D space and in the 3D world on how we work, work with them mm -hmm. today. So what are some of the, the things that you're kind of excited about to see uh, for the future of nurse? And uh, where do you where do you kind of see things things evolving and where do you th see things going from this technology? Cool. I think mm, there are different lines. Uh, the first one is like, uh, I see NERF now reaching, well, there, there are some recent works like Gaussian splatting, uh, for example, came out uh, last month in, in Seagraph and there were a lot of, uh, it has a lot of popularity. Uh, but these kind of approaches are like combining traditional 3D, 3D representations and nerves. They are like hybrid approaches. And I think when you combine both, both of them, if you do it in a smart way, you can have the benefits from both of them. Uh, and with this kind of approaches, we are going to have, have higher quality and faster rendering, uh, easier integration with our current workflows. Uh, you, can, you could do things that you couldn't do before, like the farming needs. Uh, making dynamic snaps, uh, all of this. Also, I think I see another another really cool line or a really really cool um, future works, which are combining nerves with. If you think about it, it's just a really basic um, form of AI. The neural networks that are used there are really basic, with more complex stuff like all this uh, generative AI. Uh, tools that we have done uh, out there, uh, diffusion models, being able to edit nerves, uh, use text to modify nerves, uh, maybe modify lightning conditions, uh, modify the, the, the content of the nerve, removing objects, changing their colors. And even uh, in, with some time, uh, probably we will have some text to nerve. Uh, and I think there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, but if you think about the future, it's like really exciting, right? Like, okay, now I can imagine in this future where we have we we have achieved text to nerve, text to three. Uh, actually, you have achieved text to three D, so you have achieved text to wall. Let's say, so now you can create any wall you want. Anyone can create it. You don't have to to have a team of ten three uh, D architects working on it. Um, yeah, I think it will be. I really think uh, I think we've seen something recently. There's been some tools that I've been reading up on that are kind of uh, text to world builders, where mm -hmm. you can start to basically describe a world that you want to have built, the landscape, the environment, environmental conditions, and things, and it'll just automatically procedurally generate a yeah. world. Yeah, it's like when you think about. Uh, procedural generation or procedural generation uh, they are like two different approaches right uh, both they are quite exciting but with procedural i think you will have you, you still have this 3d game style but for games are perfectly perfectly fine but the cool thing about nerfs is that since they are being created from 
the real world, they preserve this photorealism. Or they, they uh, preserve the photorealism exactly. of, a, of so, a space. So you can think also about, for example, with this 2D generation models, 2D generative models, we have been capturing, capturing 2D data for, I don't know, 50 years, something like that. Or probably a lot more than that. If, yeah. you, if you go all the way back to when exactly. you know, the first film and video was captured back in the, you know, hundred yeah. over a hundred years ago. But for 3D data, there wasn't any way to actually massively capture it and create it because you have photogrammetry, right? But you have to be a really skilled uh, uh, professional to create from photogrammetry, a 3D model, uh, to make it do photo real, it, it was a pain, right? But with NEF, this suddenly came, became really easy. And now we can capture uh, massive data, massive 3D photo real data. So you can think it is that way, like, okay, now we are building the database <laughs> to create the, generat the three generative models of the future. We now have the tool. Yeah, you see, I mean, it's interesting that you mentioned that because one of the one of the use cases and things that we've seen happening a lot, especially inside of the content space and 3D modeling space, is uh, ways to ways to kind of more efficiently uh, optimize the time and use, and you know, creating 3D models, creating 3D assets, texturing, mm -hmm. um, sculpting, and one of the big things and trends that I've seen is I've seen a lot of introduction to market, you know, different 3D scanning devices, 3D capture, volumetric capture uh, mm -hmm. devices that uh, different types of companies are coming out with. A lot of them are still actually using photogrammetry on the back end um, or computer vision based libraries like OpenCV to create, you know, point clouds or point cloud data um, for those 3D models. So it'd be interesting to hear Kind of what your perspective is on you know nerfs kind of helping inside of that space and pushing things <laughs> forward do you see nerfs uh, i mean this is kind of a no brain kind of a no brain question but uh do you see nerfs kind of changing the ways and changing the workflows that creative studios work uh as well and kind of advancing yeah. and helping their workflows for sure i, I think so i think so uh, i yeah I'm pretty sure of it. It's like now mm, you have a, a really fast way of creating these 3D elements, right? And you have mentioned a really interesting thing that there are a lot of companies out there building volumetric capture uh, devices. Or, or, or attempting, or attempting to. Or attempting, it. yeah. <laughs> so I think they will probably, I mean, NEFS has only three years. These devices have a lot of uh, engineering, you know, hardware is much uh, difficult to build. Uh, so it will probably follow software, but I think in a cup in a matter of one year, two years, we will be seeing uh, some Nerf uh, power device. Actually, you can reuse the one you have built it for using traditional photogrammetry or point clouds, uh, and you can use try to use them with Nerf. Uh, but I think that combining both uh, of them and uh, uh, having a specific design will help in the future, and uh, we will have for sure better better capture capture devices. And on the other hand, yeah, I mean, a lot of studios we have talked with, uh, they, are, they have like this similar problem. Okay, we have this set, and the main problem is that if we want to do a, a something with marketing, we have to do interviews with the actors, or, or we want to do, I don't know, maybe an actor just make a mistake during the, the shooting with their lines, and we have to do a pickup shoot. And we don't have, we no longer have this set because maybe you have just destroyed the set, you have just uh, rent the set, and now if you want to rent yeah, it back, it's, it's gone. Like two months, yeah. Or you oh, want oh, to oh. do a quick uh, a quick uh, scout, so you send a scout out on location. Exactly. They come back with video. Exactly, and it's like we don't have time during shooting. We you don't, they don't have time for do, for doing that because they have like a lot of people will think, okay, if you want to have the 3D uh, uh, scene. Of a, of a set you are shooting in, you will just stop, take you a whole day to capture everything uh, as good as, no, you can't because this is money. And the company won't, the, the producer won't pro probably pay that money 
because we're just doing that just in case it's useful for the future. But it's turned out that it is really useful to have this. So they have only five minutes to capture and they have no tool to capture this three in, uh, in five minutes, or at least they hadn't. Now with NERFS, they are like really excited, like, okay, now we have a tool that allows us like in five minutes between we are, the actors are just drinking water and changing between between scenes, we just capture the set and we got it. And not only for marketing of if you want to do a bigger scene, for the VFX artists, they, uh, they make uh, having a 3D representation of the scene uh, makes the lights, the lives a lot easier. Because now you can think about a VFX artist that, I don't know, has never been in the in the set or uh, and the, he doesn't look, he or she doesn't know how the set looks like. And having the 3D scene will help them to understand the lights, understand the, the geometry. If they have to do some particle simulations, if they have to change the light of the scene, uh, it's really useful. So I think that it will probably change the workflows, but not in a disruptive manner, it will supercharge the workflow. Yeah, if anything, it's going to make it much more streamlined, much easier. Exactly. It's going to give a lot more flexibility for creative artists and uh, for even location scouts to be able to capture footage and information, bring that back to the creative studio. They could even right. uh, pre-visualize, pre-conceptualize shots before they're even, before they spend any money uh, mm. for in-studio work or even on-location exactly. work. There is a really cool example, with specifically with NERFs, because when you do photogrammetry, you are removing the light of the scene. But with NERFs, yep. you are capturing the actual light of the scene. Uh, we have a, a proof of concept where you capture the same NERF of the same scene at different times of the day. And then the, the creative crew, the director, can decide, OK, I want to shoot here, but at which time? And now yeah, do I want the morning? The... Do I want the afternoon? Exactly. Do I want the night? And now he can see how it looks at every time of the day and the, okay, let's go for it without even moving from home. So it's it's crazy. Really cool stuff. Well, Fernando, this has been a great conversation. I've really enjoyed the time uh, taking to get to know you a little bit more, to understand how nerfs are affecting the industry and uh, it's been some really, really interesting information. For the viewers that are watching, how would they get in touch with you and how would they find you? Cool. They can, uh, I recommend everyone to visit uh, uh, bolinga.ai and get to know us a little bit more. Also, we, we have, uh, you can search for Bolinga uh, on LinkedIn. And also, from my personal side, you can se uh, search for Fernando Rivas or, the, you know, uh, my Spanish name has two, two, I have two names, so it will be Fernando Rivas Manzanegue. But I think with Fernando Rivas, you will find me on LinkedIn. And I always open to, to talk with people, talk about uh, cool projects, cool technology, NAV, uh, on AI in general. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank you again so much for joining me today. Uh, it's Thanks been great. You really informative. I think it's been a wonderful uh, crash course in, in NERFs, what they are and how they're going to affect the industry and the benefits to them. So that's is amazing. Uh, been checking out your website as well as we've been going through the discussion. So it's Volingo, V-O-L-I-N-G-A dot A-I. Uh, some really, really cool stuff there. So I really look forward to seeing what you and your team, you know, produce and bring, bring to the market in the future. And uh, thank you so much for joining today, Fernando. Thank you, Geoffrey. Thank you for inviting me. I, yeah, I really had a, a good time. <laughs> and to all the viewers, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again on the next episode. Thanks, everyone.